Yo, what up, guys? My name is Gene. I'm Jax Twin, and on this channel, we talk tech. If you guys are new to my channel, please consider subscribing to stay up to date when I drop new videos every week. Now, in today's video, I am going to be doing a quick review on the Samsung Tab S8 Plus, which is actually a tablet I picked up recently. And I actually thought it would be a great device for someone who was actually seeking kind of a portable device to take on the go with them. And I actually think this fits the bill. In the box, you do get the tablet, you do get the S Pen, you do get the data cable, you also do get the ejector pen, but no, and I'll say it again, no power brick. Key features of this tablet include the large 120 hertz, 12.4 inch Super AMOLED screen, the near zero latency S Pen, the upgraded 4 nanometer 8 Gen Qualcomm Snapdragon chipset. We also do get eight gigs of RAM with the option of 128 or 250 gigs of storage and an additional option of adding a micro SD card up to one terabyte. In terms of battery, we do have a 10,090 milliamp battery inside this tablet. This tablet does also come with Wi-Fi 6. In terms of the camera system, we do have dual and ultra wide cameras. You have the option of three colors, graphite, silver, and pink gold. Now, you do get quad core speakers and Adobe Atomos sound. This tablet does also include a USB type C port with the ability for fast charging. And for the weight of this thing, it is coming in at a whopping 1.2 pounds. Insane, right? I did actually end up picking up the graphite version with the 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. I'm still amazed on how super thin and lightweight this device is. Now, checking out the bezels, I can't remember a tablet that looks this good. Now the buttons are tactile and the corners have a nice feel to them. The tablet has amazing visuals and the sound quality is pretty nice. Now for all of you guys who are curious about how that sounds, here's a quick test. Didn't I tell you? Uh -huh. Did I tell you? Now, as far as downsides, when it comes to the design, this thing is a fingerprint magnet. This is literally the case all over and you may have to consider a case and a screen protector. Now, the second issue is more of an engineering consideration. I found myself covering the speakers in landscape mode quite a bit, which affects the listening experience to a minor degree. It's not bad, but it's to be expected. Now, let's talk about the S Pen. The design of the pen is actually very subtle, very comfortable, very nice, but I also have to mention the downsides right away with this, the color of the actual S Pen. I can see myself losing this thing in my car or around the house somewhere easily. So that's kind of a bummer. You will have to pick up a case in order to hold it or keep it somewhere. So that's another consideration. Now, the camera is subjective. So I just want to get that out of the way. On the front, you do get a 12 megapixel camera that is f2.2, 120 degree ultra wide. And on the back, you do get a 13 megapixel f2 wide and a six megapixel f2.2 ultra wide. For video, this thing can do up to 4K 30 and 60 frames per second and 30 frames per second in 1080p. Now for a tablet, it was pretty good. Good enough to capture decent enough pictures. Videos were actually pretty nice and you can actually take video calls and vlog. And those are some quick thoughts to consider. Now let's talk about the battery performance. The battery for me in the first few days lasted two days since my last charge, since my first charge, which is actually pretty nice. Now you can charge the tablet up to 100% in about 82 minutes. Now that's thanks to its 45 watt fast charging. Now the power saving option gives you the ability to extend the battery life quite a bit longer, which is excellent. Excellent. Now let's go ahead and talk about my everyday use with this tablet. Now watching videos was also pretty good. Uh, screen was bright, the colors were good, and there's just something about that aspect ratio that makes it very, very 
uh, easy to watch, easy to consume content over and over and over and over again. Now, gaming was also pretty good, especially for the respectable games that I could play without ads. I played a few games using my Sony controller since those are kind of what I'm into. My only issue with playing games on a tablet is the fact that sometimes they crash or missing features otherwise found in gaming consoles. Now, surfing the web and productivity work was pretty good. Every now and then I like to read in the vertical landscape because you could see a lot more on the page and get more of a desktop like experience. I absolutely love the aspect ratio overall everything felt smooth and natural gestures was okay there was an occasional lag when switching orientation and swiping up to see other apps this would change a bit later after some tweaks to my settings and some updates now let's go ahead and talk about multitasking multitasking was unlike any other that i have seen it's one of my favorite features to be able to surf the web and to have apps open was absolutely clutch especially for those days that i'm editing videos and need a reference or or some music playing in the background. Now, using Dex was also a game changer as it allowed me to carry this as a true portable device to complement my PC with the option of connecting my device to an external monitor just about anywhere. Now in Dex mode, you can actually take a closer look at things like videos, artwork, and documents on a larger display while still using your phone as a phone. Watching movies on a monitor while checking texts or taking a call while reviewing documents without breaking your focus was absolutely phenomenal. For a creative like myself, this was perfect and this is simply something that I've grown to love, especially on this tablet. Now, the fingerprint scanner is located on the screen. It's not the best that I've used, but it works. Face unlock works good, but remember uh, to set it to landscape mode. That's something that I actually had to get used to. The S Pen was also a nice touch, especially with taking notes and doing things like screen grabs. Now, speaking of customization, you can change just about anything on this tablet and make it your own. You can add widgets, get incredible apps, search across the tablet and web much easier. One of the things that I did buy on the Play Store was an app called Wave Live Wallpaper, which gives you this sick wallpaper transition. I actually thought it was great, especially on this tablet. In terms of the overall experience with Android, as mentioned, it was actually pretty good. I wouldn't call it the smoothest tablet I've used, but it was very, very good. I just wish that you had the option to uh, have more RAM in this tablet. Now you can use RAM Plus, which gives you the option to use the tablet storage to provide virtual memory. Now this means that you can choose more memory to allow more apps to stay open in the background and I actually found this to be super duper helpful. Now, overall, this tablet was just something that I didn't expect. I actually just picked it up to complement my S22 Ultra. And I have to say that Samsung did a fantastic job with this. This. It's definitely a time to be alive with tech. If you're considering buying a computer, I would strongly point you in this direction. If you guys have questions about this tablet, I'd definitely love to hear it down below. If you have this tablet, I definitely would like to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys in my next video. And as always, until my next video, peace.